India has just started making some very impressive electric cars at very affordable prices. For example, one of the local manufacturers in India makes an EV for 10,000 US dollars, and it's actually decent. I'll put a link in the description below to the video I made about that. It's actually the video on this channel has had more views than any other video. But today, I just found out there's actually an Indian electric car, which is cheaper than any other electric car in the world. And it's not even close. In fact, for the same price as I paid for my electric bicycle, I could buy four of them. I kid you not. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Welcome back, everyone else. Thank you for tuning in. On this channel, we've made, well, two and a half thousand videos about electric cars, battery technology, renewable energy, and we've made a lot of videos about very affordable electric cars, which are pretty much all made in China. For example, one of the world's best-selling EVs, and 99% of sales are in China right now, but they plan on expanding those to other countries where it's gone on sale, for example, Indonesia, is the Wuling Hongwan Mini EV, which is jointly manufactured by General Motors, SAIC, and Wuling. They all own 33% of that company. Now, that vehicle, in its base form, costs only around $5,000 US dollars. And in fact, the companies make no profit on it at all. But because it's so cheap, it qualifies for incentives in China, and therefore, actually, they end up making about a 20% margin, which is a pretty good margin. Not in actual dollar figures, but considering the automotive industry margins, it's actually better than margins that Toyota make on its vehicles, period. However, in India, they're now making an electric car that costs $1,450. And they say it has 100 kilometers of range. Now, that's a lot more range than my electric bicycle has, unless I'm just pedaling the thing and it's a damn heavy thing to pedal. So if this is true, then this vehicle could change India forever. Now, when I first saw this car, I've got to admit, I thought it was a joke. I thought, oh, that looks like an old classic car from, I don't know, a hundred years ago. Looks a bit like the old Ford Model T. Never know. Maybe this will be the next iteration of the Ford mass-produced vehicle that's affordable for the masses. Now, this thing is actually way more affordable than any vehicle Ford has ever made in its history. I mean, think about it. It's one and a half thousand US dollars today in today's money. It's actually cheaper than about 99% of motorcycles built in the world. It's styled like a vintage car and it's the most affordable electric car in India. Now, if this car was sold anywhere else, it would be the most affordable electric car in every country around the world. It actually costs 1.45 lakh, which ends up being just over one and a half thousand US dollars. And considering the fact that when you buy an electric car in India right now, you pay only 5% purchase tax, whereas the least amount of purchase tax you pay on a gasoline powered car is 30%, and it goes on a sliding scale upwards depending on how much the car is. And to be honest, most cars in India attract the tax of closer to 60%. That makes this car even more affordable in India. The market share of EVs is actually increasing now in India thanks to government support. The government, I mean, they're not doing as much as in other countries, but they're definitely moving that way. They want 40% of all vehicle sales in India in 2030 to be fully electric. And they've got a long way to go, but I think that they can get there. Now, as of now, there's some very good electric vehicles in India. For example, BYD's Auto 3, which I've just purchased, has just gone on sale in India. In fact, Indian companies are now making EVs, but they're being supported by companies like BYD who are planning on making EVs and already make them there in the country as well. And why are they doing that? Well, one of the key reasons is this. The Indian car market used to be very small. However, it's now the world's fourth largest car market. In 2025, it will be the world's third largest, leapfrogging Japan. And it makes sense. There's 1.4 billion people in the country. Now, although the current EVs in India have a lot of advantages like low running costs, they're environmentally friendly, they have less maintenance, much less maintenance, and a range of other benefits, 
These, most of them are still on the more costly side in comparison to what the average Indian person can afford in particular, and in comparison to a lot of the budget priced gasoline powered vehicles. Tata Motors currently has the most affordable range of EVs in the country, like the Nexon EV, the Tigor EV, and the recently launched Tiago EV. But about the cheapest EV in India is about, well, four times more expensive than this. The Tiago EV all other through catchback is the most affordable EV in India, and including process taxes, the base model variant costs about 8 lakh. Now aside from this, you can get the MG City EV and a Citroen C3 based EV that are some upcoming affordable EVs, but they're still not really in the price range of many people in India. Now don't get me wrong, there's definitely an emerging middle class of people in India who want more affordable EVs, but they're still willing to pay for a decent car. However, this is the kind of car which will benefit tens of millions of people who possibly have never owned a car before. Several small scale enterprises are working in the electric vehicle space with the goal of the industry to produce truly affordable electric cars. And this is the first of them. This one is actually made by a company called Green Masters. And well, Green Masters, you guys have achieved something truly amazing. The world's most affordable electric car. Now, why is it the most affordable? How are they able to do this? Well, first of all, it doesn't have a roof. So it's not particularly safe, but hey, it's a lot safer than riding what the majority of people ride in Asian countries, which is motorcycles and bicycles. Now, as you can see at the front, there's a silver mesh grill and it's surrounded by a matte black finish with the Green Masters logo at the top. The vehicle actually gets LED headlamps, which even a lot of vehicles sold in Australia don't have right now. 19 inch spoke wheels, a bench type seat, and a small 70 litre boot at the back, along with tail lamps, which are straight off the Royal Enfield Bullet, which is the motorbike they make. The battery pack is placed in the hood, while the electric motor is positioned on the rear axle, making it a rear wheel drive vehicle. Now, it does have an instrument console, which has two units one for the speed, while the other shows the battery consumption, along with telltale lights in the center. What about the specifications? What are they? Well, the base trim of the EV gets a 48 volt, 30 amp hour lithium battery pack paired with a 900 watt electric motor. Yeah, it's a small pack, but hey, this is a very affordable car. The power output from the system is, it's only one horsepower. So realistically, you wouldn't be able to carry too much stuff. However, the claim range is 50 kilometers. Charging time of the battery pack on a standard wall socket is three to four hours and top speed, is 40 kilometers an hour, which to be honest, in India would be fine. In terms of dimensions, it's 2.74 meters long. So it's actually nearly as long as a Wheeling Hong Wan Mini EV, which is only three meters long, and it's 1.37 meters in height. Ground clearance is just under half a meter at 450 millimeters. One of the great things about this car is though, it only weighs 190 kilos. It's even lighter than a Royal Enfield Classic 350 motorcycle. So the Green Masters 2 seat EV actually costs 1.45 lakh, but they have an even better version that comes with 100 kilometers of range. The Green Masters offer a top trim of this version and it gets alloy wheels, a bigger 48 volt 90 amp hour battery pack, which as you can see, it's got three times the amount of batteries in that one. And it comes with a much more powerful 1000 watts and a claim range of 100 kilometers. Now all EVs that these company makes come with a two year warranty. And well, hey, how much more can you expect at this price? Now I think these are pretty cool. For the price, they could make mobility affordable for hundreds of millions of people around the world who currently cannot afford a car. And if you think about it, if you paired one of these with say a solar panel, this would make transport possible for so many people who it hasn't been possible for in the past. These are the kind of cars which Although you might look at it first and think, oh, that's just crazy. Actually, I think it makes a lot of sense. And personally, I'm excited to see them. In fact, I wouldn't mind buying one. If I could, I would. Enfield, let me know. How do I get my hands on one of these? I want to take one for a spin. Thanks for watching, guys. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Make sure you subscribe and have a great day. Bye-bye.